Hello everyone, it's Natalie, and today's story is called Little Fox. The first few pages are just pictures, so if you want to pause the video and make up a story about the pictures, that could be a fun way to start. Little Fox races along behind two butterflies because they're purple. Suddenly, there's no ground under Little Fox's paws, only air. Little Fox falls and falls. The ground rushes up and hits him. Thump. And then, then his dream starts. Little Fox has never had a dream like this before. He is a baby again. As small as an apple, it's dark, he says, <coughs> and all he can think is mommy and milk and milk and mommy and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The dream goes on. Little Fox is a few weeks older. He smells Daddy Fox. He smells him coming into the den with a mouse in his jaws. The mouse smells of... It doesn't matter what the mouse smells of because Fox brother has already grabbed it. Little Fox climbs over Fox brother and Fox sister and another Fox sister are climbing too. They're all climbing over each other. It's warm and funny and all the time Fox brother's paws is poking into Little Fox's ear. It's a beautiful dream. Little Fox is a bit older again. He goes outside for the first time out of the den. It's nighttime. There's a moon. Little Fox doesn't know the moon yet. He doesn't know that it looks like the sun, but silver. He squeezes his eyes shut until the moonlight stops stinging. Then Little Fox jumps on his brother and sisters, and they jump on him because outside smells of everything all at once of woods, of moss, of little animals, food, of big animals, not food, of grass and flowery flowers. And when you stand in the wind, your hair stands on end. And when you turn around, it blows the other way. The dream keeps going. It's, it is still very early. The sun has just risen. It's yawning in the sky. Little Fox is thirsty. The smell of fresh water always gives him a happy, giddy feeling. So he runs towards it. But there's a very big animal. She's standing with her white bottom to Little Fox. On legs like thin branches. Little Fox hesitates for a moment, then creeps closer. The animal has spots. She also has a very, very, very big ears. She looks up. She's not scared of little fox. Why not? Fox cubs can bite too, you know. But little fox doesn't want to bite this animal. He wants to drink some water. And a little later, that's what he does. They drink water next to each other. Birds are singing and the sun is now wide awake. When the animal happens to turn her head towards him, Little Fox sees a few drops of delicious water on her snout. Is Little Fox brave enough? He, yes, he is. Slurp, he licks off the drops. In the dream, Daddy Fox tells Little Fox not to be so curious. Daddy says, too nosy is dead nosy. Little Fox doesn't understand, but Mommy and Daddy know everything. They show him how to be in the world. Blackberries and red currants, pick them with your lips. A worm, jump on it. 
Scuffle mice, they're tricky. First, you have to hear them. Stay nice and quiet. Then you have to grab them with your paws. They wriggle. But when they, but then they make the yummiest noise of all. They crunch between your jaws. Oh, now little fox remembers what his clever sister said once. If you catch a mouse, it's because the mouse was too nosy. The day with the ball. That's in his dream too. Little fox runs off with his brother because now they're allowed to go further and further and mommy doesn't get angry. Suddenly, a happy smell fills their noses. The smell comes from a bag you can tear open. And if you root through it, you find lots of delicious things, some sweet, some salty, their tongues get greedier and greedier. The bag is next to the house where the dangerous humans live. And just when Little Fox and his brother have finished eating, they discover the ball. Little Fox lies on his stomach. That way, he can get a good look at the ball globe. Then he jumps on it. A ball is a sun on the ground. The ball makes Little Fox forget everything. His brother has already gone, but that doesn't matter. Little Fox keeps playing by himself. He doesn't look up until he hears click. It comes from one of the dangerous humans, but it's a little one. The little ones don't look dangerous. And the little human has one big eye. Click. Just to be on the safe side, little fox runs off. But first he does a quick pee on the ball. That way his brother will know who was here last if he comes back tomorrow. Click. The dream isn't all nice. Oh, oh. Now Little Fox sees the slippery, nasty jar. The slippery, nasty jar was near the dangerous human's house, too. Not far from the bag. Not far from the ball. The top of the jar looked like a hole, so Little Fox stuck his head in it. You often find food in holes. Mice, rats, worms, or moles. But there wasn't anything in the slippery, nasty jar. Just Little Fox's head, and he couldn't get it out again. He shook it and shook it and shook it. It didn't help. He walked and ran and wriggled on the ground. That didn't help either. The jar got heavier. Little Fox thought, why am I always so curious? He hears Daddy Fox saying, too nosy is. But then he thinks, the human, the little human with the big eye and the clicking sound and phew, the little human helps. What kind of dream is this? First, it seems like it was only about nice things, all the nice days he's, he, he'd had. But that day with the slippery jar, that wasn't nice. And now Little Fox suddenly remembers that mommy fo what Mommy Fox taught him, that you have to curl up inside your tail when it's cold or when the days are bad and the world turns into an angry place. Yes, what kind of dream is this? Suddenly, it's got two purple butterflies in it. They're fluttering so happily that Little Fox runs along behind them. But the Little Fox is running in midair. He falls, and the ground rushes up and hits him with a thump. Little Fox sees himself lying there. That's funny. It's not even possible. You can only do things like that in dreams. Little Fox sees Little Fox lying somewhere. On the ground, in the sand, he's not moving. His eyes are shut. Little Fox thinks, how did things turn out for that little fox? He thinks, is that little fox going to wake up again? And he thinks, hey, that little fox is me. But then he smells something. His fox brother and his fox sisters. Mommy, daddy. Little Fox says to himself, I think I know how things turn out for that little fox. I think that little fox opens his eyes and everything's good. And so little fox opens his eyes because everything is good. Isn't it? Oh no, wait. Little fox sees more butterflies, but he is certainly not going to chase them because none of them are purple.
Some notes on this book's production. To make the art for the interiors and cover, Marije Tolman took photos of the Dutch dunes and woods and made risograph prints of them. Then she used various techniques to draw on the prints. The text was set in Trusdell, originally designed by Friedrich Gaudi in 1930, revived by Steve Madison for monotype in 1944. This display text was set in Monte Catini Pro Stretto, first released by Louise Philly in 2017. The full color book features a dazzling fifth color. And that is the end of the book. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.